G'day, how you all going? Ian Aplos here, you're a colour guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. While I put my gloves on, I'll just get some sizes on the canvas there for you. In inches, 12 by 16 to be exact, and also you'll see the colours running up the screen there. They're the colours that I'm going to use. Now if you don't have those exact colours, don't worry, just have something similar. And once you've become more advanced in your art journey, then you can be more fussy. But while you're learning, just learn with what you got and, and um, increase what you have as you go along. There we go, put my other glove on. Um, you see the picture in the opening credits, that's what we're going to paint today. Nice and simple, and it's for beginners. And I want to create that vibe that makes someone feel the vibe of the painting happening when they see it on the wall, because you want people to go, oh, I like that. So come on, let's get right into it. Now, we've got a landscape layout. I want the horizon line probably about halfway, just a, just a measly under halfway. That's my imaginary horizon line because we've got a lot happening in the foreground here. And we're going to have, uh, that's the ocean, the ocean full of motion. So it's probably going to be like this. You'll see a, a gap through the ocean there, like that. And from here, we're going to have some, I don't know, some grasses and sand dunes, a bit of a palm coming up in front of it, and I want some shadows on the ground. That's the main thing, and this is the ocean I want and the shadows on the ground. So we're going to start with the sky first. Now, I've got some soft-bodied acrylic paint. I call it craft paint, and I want to prime up my sky area with that. And next to it, I'm just going to put some retarder. So I ran out of that bottle, I opened the other one. This retarder, if someone's thinking, what's retarder, what's that stuff? What it is, it just slows down the drying time of this acrylic paint. Now I always like to mix this retarder and that soft bodied uh, titanium white together with my putter on a brush. And this putter on a brush is fantastic for painting and preparing your skies and getting all the colors on there. And if you want this brush and the blending brushes I use, Private message me on Facebook, links are below. Now I'm just going to get the sky area um, put on, so I'll get all the top here. Now what I mean by put it on, I, I get it loaded up and I put it on like this. I'm not, I'm not dingle dangling around and just painting where nothing's coming off the brush. You've got to get it right in there. Push it around. Don't worry about all the lumps and bumps and brush strokes. Don't worry about that at all, because what this put it on a brush does, see that? It looks quite messy. Then you go to the, see I've been using this part of the brush where the paint is to get it on. Okay, now I come to the tip of the brush and then I stroke that left and right and I get a nice beautiful thin sheet. Okay, with the tip of the brush. Now that's ready to put my sky colours on there. Now I've got some mid-tone grey permanent linseren and some cerulean blue. I want the cerulean blue to be my sky colour. Now that white on the canvas is going to lighten this up so it's not going to be so deep blue, cartoony blue. It'll be more like a realistic colour. So I'll just start at the top all the way across, push it right in there and then start bringing it down to your horizon line. And if anything, it'll fade as it gets to the bottom. Now I'm going to the tip of this putter on a brush. See the tip and the tip, look, See how I can move it? That's what I'm doing with the tip of the brush. And I'm, I'll stroke it with some X strokes as well just to get rid of those lines. And now I'm stroking it left and right to get a beautiful realistic sky colour there. There's a bit of white glaze here, it doesn't matter, a bit of white glare. Sometimes the sky has glare in it, that's okay. But if you don't like it, go to the deeper part of the brush and do that. Okay, now what I want to do before I finish is just get my horizon part of the sky done, which I like to do as a polluted colour. You've seen me do that in videos before. So I'll grab some grey, and it's still got the, the blue mixed with it, and I'm going to get a little bit of this permanent linseren until I find that grey, purpley, hazy colour that I'm looking for. Not too much, because acrylic paints, when they dry, they do dry darker. 
and this is going to be not just glary grey, it's got that real value of that permanent linzerin in there. And we're going to just put this along the bottom where our horizon line is, so pretty much there, using the tip of the brush. Now I'm coming up and I want it to fade away into the blue, just like that. Now to me that looks a bit too grey, it could have had more red in there, but that's okay. I'm happy with that. I've seen these colours in the sky here and that's why I like to put it into my paintings. Now we'll just get some clouds in there. Now I'm going to grab a, this is a hog bristle fan brush, quite a firm one. And I like to use these brushes to stamp my cloud patterns into my skies. So we'll get some of this. Now we're going to see this part of the sky. So what I'd like to do is probably get some beautiful lineal clouds here. Something I can bring down to the horizon line and probably dance up a bit just like that. Making a cloud. Now grab yourself a blending brush and with the blending brush you need to be wiping it at the same time as you blend. So I'm going to start pushing, getting those brush strokes out of there and bringing this down to the horizon line like so. Give it a bit of a pull, some movement in the cloud and look what's on the brush. I'll wipe that now. Get those tops just tickled a little bit, soften them, beautiful. That line there, I want to keep that lineal, pull it right across into that grey colour that we put on there. Look at that, beautiful. Now the bottom, I've just been wiping that brush, the bottom you need to pull down. Leaving that top hard line there. Take your time, there's no rush to do this. And look at that, you can get some beautiful clouds. Now I saw this little opening there and I thought, I'll leave that there, I quite like it. I quite like it. There we go, we've got a beautiful cloud on the horizon. We'll put some more in there. So we'll get something stamped on, rolling this on, pushing it on any old way. All the way over there. Grabbing your blending brush, finding out where maybe a bottom of your cloud might be, which I reckon's about there somewhere. Just pull it out. Now see, it does look a bit, I like to level that up a bit. Get some of this out there as well. See, there's so many ways you can blend a cloud and then start put the turmoil and the luster within this cloud. All right, get rid of any deliberate brush strokes you don't like. Look at that, a nice vibrant bright bit there. Leave that there if you want. Get these coming over our head. Just a subtle cloud. And now we'll put some weather within that so it doesn't look so bland. I'll show you what I do for that. Grab that grey. I've got a smaller fan brush just to stamp this in. Now I don't want to use that colour because it's going to clash with the dirty horizon polluted area there, okay? So this will be a bit different. And we'll just stamp some of this weather or, you know, the, the grey as clouds have in them. Get it up there. Some all the way over there. Now see all that grey that I just put in there? What you want to do is just see all these edges? Watch what I do. Just tuck them down, soften them down, get rid of those edges. Use a smaller brush if you need, just something you can blend. Dancing it, pulling it, tapping it. And we're getting some grey within the cloud and it's not just a boring cheap little white cloud. Something like this, you can do it. We'll fix this up here. Just dance it along. And then to give this cloud a bit more dimension, we just simply add the yumminess. What's the yumminess? The yumminess is just some more white. Just to see how this is all pretty much the one value, the one tone, we're going to try and bring it in front and behind everything. Bits of yumminess, I call this. But when you see it in the clouds, you know what it's doing. You probably put some, I'll do that later. And see that yumminess? Leave the loud white vibrancy of it there, the whiteness of it there, but you're just sinking that down now like we did to the gray. I'll show you what I mean. Dancing it, tickling it, leaving it there, getting rid of any deliberate looking brush marks just so as it's looking more like a real cloud, a 
if you practice this procedure, you can do it. It's so easy once you get hold of it. And a bit more over here. See here, we'll dance that over the top bit there. Lightly. And there we go. We've just got a nice cloud in the center of the sky. Something that looks okay. If you want, just to break this one up, you can put another one right in front there. Watch this. Right in front. like that and then the same again leave that vibrant bit at the top the, the hard line at the top bring the bottom down see all this paint is still wet and blendable because I put that retarder and the raw white soft white paint in there in the beginning if I didn't this will be very chalky and hard to achieve these clouds I've given this horizon area a dry because I want to put in the water now up to the sky. Just using some more of that soft acrylic body white paint. So roughly where I want the water to come. Get this all the way across there like so. Now what you don't want to do, which I have done in the past, you don't want to get a nice bead of paint across the horizon line. You want to get that down a bit and then paint to the horizon level. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to do now. That's what's going on in my mind. So I'll get this nicely white across there in a reasonably straight line. Now you can dry the living buggery out of yours if you want and then tape it up. I'm just making sure I don't get a ridge of paint there, a white ridge of paint. Stroke that left and right. And then we're going to put our watercolours in there. All right, I'm starting off with turquoise. It's phthalo turquoise to be exact, but make up a turquoise if you don't have turquoise. And I want the main horizon area really dark before it comes more tropical colour. So we'll get this all the way across there if I can, nice and level. And like I said, you use some tape if you can't do it like this. There we go. Now I'll get the brush on its edge. And I'll try and get that dark out there. Nice and dark. Nice and dark. There we go. Now we'll bring it down a bit further. So what I've got here, I've got some yellow as well. And I want to lighten some of this up with some yellow. Get a nice green water going there. Look at that. Add a bit of um, white to the mix as well. Get some of this craft paint over here. Mix this up. There we go. So you can see the different values we've got here. Yeah, that's more tropical. And this is going to be the bottom half of our ocean. So we're going to pretty much massage it into there oh it's got to be a lot more lighter than that so i'm going to pick up some more white some more craft white put into it because i want it a lot lighter there we go now get that out there like so push that push it push it push it Now I want it really, really picking up some white. I want it really wider here now. Roughly where the shoreline is. I'm just wondering, I don't know what it's going to be like if I put a bit of yellow with it. That yellow that I mixed, there we go. Something different. I like it. Yeah, that's it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, I've given that a dry, and what I want to do, because this bit here is the bit that's going to be seen in the opening, I've grabbed a nice, neat, sharp flat brush, and I want to get just some scallops of detail in the water. You don't have to do this if you want. If, you want to, if you're more advanced and got the know-how and the patience and whatnot to put this into your water, I'm coming from the dark, okay, and scalloping this into the lighter color. It's just gonna give the water a bit more, oh wow, I like that kind of look, you know? 
try and make them straight. This brush is kind of trying to give them a smiley face, mouth, a smiley look, but I don't want that. I want to sort of come out in bands. Don't have any little blobs if you can help it. All right, and we're going to put a bit of light color in that as well. Now this lighter color we got, I've made it a little bit darker and the same thing again, we're getting some of this color in between all this into here as well. Making these scallops that create the vibe of your painting. All right, now just to finish it off, I'm just grabbing the simple titanium white on the same brush. I've cleaned that brush and I'm just grabbing titanium white. And down here, there's going to be where, <coughs> excuse me. Where it's meeting the sand. Can I have a look at that? Yeah, as it's coming closer to the shore, you can see some of this white water breaking. I've got to just straighten my brush up. It's going a bit arched. I don't want it to arch. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of swirl it like this. Just get some agitation here. Now see those hard lines? I don't want to see them, I've just wiped the brush. And I want to distort those hard lines now, just in the whirly bit at the foreshore. Get rid of the hard edge on them. Just like so. Add a bit more in there. This is the agitation. Wipe it. and push it back into the water. Keeping them lineal, left and right, horizontal. And that, you practice this, you can do it. Okay, what I wanna do, I've got um, yellow ochre, yellow oxide, and this is just a simple sand color I use, and I'll mix it with white. If you have a better method for your sand colors, use your own, but I can only show you what I know how to do. And I'm just going to simply map in the sand dune. So I want to come roughly from about here. I'll scrap it in. Coming down, it's coming across the front of the painting. Virgin up here. And we're going to have some stuff there. Now I'm just going to block this in. I'm just using a flat brush. And I want to try and get some lighter values in this now and then the darker values as well. So I've given that a bit of a dry, it's not 100% dry and I want to start lightening this up and if it's not dry enough I'll dry it a bit more because if I feel it's merging too much I'll dry it a bit more because the sun's above. We're going to have shadows here, so I want some, sh I want some sun hitting this sand here. Now I'm going to have to dry it a bit more, just so as we can get this merging together better than what it is. Now I've got some titanium white out of the tube. It's going to mix with this. We'll get this a lot more glaring because this the sun is glaring this sand up. There we go. That's why I didn't dry it 100% because it allows this paint to merge with that darker value of the sand colour. All right, what I want us to do next, these two sides here, I want to add some depth, darkness of some dune foliage, palm sort kind of shrubs, trees here. So I'm just going to grab a dark perylene green and I don't know what brush I'll use. I'll, I'll just go for a, um, a filbert brush. I want to try and get... I don't know, some kind of plant coming up here and also some grass 
vegging out. Now I've dried, I don't know if I said it or not, but I've dried the, um, the sand. And where I want the grass to come, I'm just gonna kind of taper this out like so where the grass is sort of grown onto the sand there. Along here, I might use another round brush as well, just so as I can get some different foliage type of beach trees coming up here. And I might even try and do a little bit of a cocos palm type of one there, something coming out here. There we go. Something like that. <laughs> Get something over here. And something all denced up in here. I'm leaving pockets so you can see through here. Now I'm going to grab that other brush just to break up some of the... Um, I want this to be like one of those, I don't know what they're called, but I've seen them on beaches, not in Australia, but in other, other cities. Kind of get these round deliberate. Uh, get it flat. And don't worry, this looks weird at the moment, but I feel once I detail it'll look okay. And we're going to have something behind me palm tree here. And I'll go back to that other round brush and get some distinct stuff sticking out. Now that perylene green, I've mixed up some um, cadmium yellow just to get a different value. I've dried everything here. Now I'm going to kind of highlight bits and pieces here, just where I've made all this shape. It's kind of like a blacky green this highlight looks like. I'm using this one to get certain shapes within here, within the highlight, with more detail as we're going along. You watch, it'll just come together, it'll make its own. We'll get some kind of stuff going on in here as well. Maybe over here. And now I want to grab a flat brush and create those um, same colour paint though and get some of, um, I don't know, some of this hitting. Yeah, like it's a bit of a palm thing coming. Over here. Okay, I've got a flat fill, but I've got the forest green and cad yellow. I want to make a different value of green now. And leave the dark there. Sit this right on top of it. And this will kind of taper. It can distinguish what branches and shrubs are in there. Pretty easy to do something like this. It's a lot of fun, it might take a while. You don't need a painting to be done in 20 minutes. You take your time with it. On the top bits, leaving the darks. So with what's in the brush, I'm just mixing up some more yellow with just that color of what was left in the brush. I don't want to add any more the darker value to it. I'll get some more water into there. And we can try and get some of this Lusted up there. Some of it. Oh wow, that was a big one. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Get some of this tucked in there. And I want to lust up some of this grass now. Not too much, just bits here and there. Find some of this and get some of 
just lusted right out on the lawn there, on the sand there. Sorry, not the lawn. This is just some kind of ground cover growing on the sand dune. I don't know what it's called, but we get it here. It's real rubbery type. Now that yellow ochre we used for the sand, I'm grabbing some of that just in this round brush, just to shove in, as you can see here, some bits of this color. It's just breaking it up. Something coming from within it overall there. There we go, something up there. It's just mumble jumble, but it, I, I like it. It's loosely painted, if that makes any sense. Now I've got a flat brush and I'm grabbing my burnt umber just to create the stalk of the palm tree. Not the stalk, the trunk. And I pretty much want, where did I, oh, we'll get this coming all the way up there. One there and probably one in front of the sky there, just like that, see? Now what I need to do is to create the shape. So I'm gonna get the thickness of it. Now make sure you dry everything before you do this as well. So we're gonna get the thickness of this coming to a reasonably narrower end at the top there. I'll level this up off camera. Now this color I had here for the sand, I'm just gonna grab some of that with the burn umber mixed with it. Start with this one, I'll just come from, make sure that's dry. What I wanna do is come around Scratch it on, come around, make the roundness of the trunk. Okay, just down a little bit, making it round. There we go, like that. And where your brush is going to each new stroke, it kind of makes the bands within the, the tree. Now if you've got too many light bits in there you can always go back with some darker bits. Bring this right over there, right over there like that. Let's kind of fix this up here. And just Don't think about it, it's pretty easy to do, you can do it. So just grabbing some more titanium white on the brush, get it out here a bit away from there. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Now if you feel you're gonna to have to dry this thing, dry it. Just break up the values of that trunk. Same here. Turn the brush around, grab the other side of the paint. There we go. Then we can grab a black brush and put our nice sharp little detail in that trunk, I'll show you. So just grabbing your script liner, we're coming, making some of these markings within the tree. Just detail. I'm just using that dark perylene green. You can use black. Let's get some stuff like that going within the trunk there. So find some of these dark bits and just wangle into the tree there. Look at that. There we go. I'm just mucking around here, but trying to get the vibe of it going. There we go there. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing some white and glaring up this bit like lights coming through here. 
across the trunk here. And when I put the shadow on the ground, it'll make up. And I want a bit of light coming on the trunk here as well. So this light makes up all the difference, all these lights and darks. Scratch it in, bring that light through. Okay, now the next thing is to We'll give this one its frongs. I'm going to use that dark perylene green and I'm using a flat brush just to do these simple prongs for a palm tree. What I do, I don't want to come too, I want to come out to about here. I normally start from the middle, come up and then let it scratch, let it scratch. These are the most simplest prongs you can do. We'll get another one all the way up here. Now they're looking quite skinny and slim at the moment, but that's okay. We're just getting our bearings. Another one right about here, bang, coming over. Just a flat brush. Coming down there, boom, boom, boom. Another one coming, maybe get another one coming down there. Now, I'm deliberately showing you how skinny and thin it looks so as you can learn how to make it look a bit more real. What I'm going to do now is show you just what you need to do for that. So now see the middle bit here, use this same dark colour. Let's get all this, come down the trunk a bit, bits of scraggly bits there. You want to make it busy, but when you're making it busy, you're also getting a few little points out there as well. All there. Get some there. Like so. Now I just want to fix this up. It's a bit, there we go. That was a little bit too slim. See this line? I don't want to see that line there. After putting the dark color on the prongs, I mixed up some yellow and forest green as you can see here and just highlighted the frongs. The camera was off when I was doing that before. I think the camera was off. I just put some um, frongs up the top here. Coming off, suggesting, suggesting, it, suggesting from this tall tree. Okay, now I want to add the shadow on the ground because you can see the ground's lacking some substance and then what it's lacking is the shadow. So I've got the burn umber here and some of this colour here and I want to make the shadow with this. So for a start I want to get some just something here indicating where's my colour and over the ground all the way along here break it up break it up I want to, I want some shadow here too now coming from all in there and just dancing out onto the sand here There's more shadow here. I don't feel that brush is the right brush, but I'll keep using it because I'm stuck with it now. There's 
there's trees all over above creating these shadows. Okay, I've just kind of detailed the shadow up a bit. I'll just autograph it. And we can whack a frame on it. Now, thank you to all my patrons who support my content every month. Much appreciated. Check out the links in the description below. There's about 12 of them there. And it's handy to know just what links I have. Become a member of my art group. Tell me you met me on YouTube to answer the questions to get in. Okay. All right, let's whack a frame on this. There you go, that's not too shabby. We've got a tropical beach dune going into the water there. And the water looks okay. The palm's a bit okay as well. You can mix it and make it your own, okay? And just remember, I know you can do it. Well, that turned out all right, I think. I had a lot of fun painting that. I hope you learned something along the way. Message me in the comments below if you have any questions you want to ask, and they will be addressed in the next Friday Night Live that I do each week. And remember to tell your friends if you like what you see here, but if you don't like what you see, you tell everybody. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.